Bob, we look back on on the spring after you know a, a thrilling championship season, and you know if if you want to start with with the offense, I, I look at the position that is most interesting being your wide receiver position. I mean, you look at last year's stats and of your top eight receipt, you know, top eight guys, you know, in terms of receptions, five seniors, and then you got Jesper Horstead who's playing baseball, you know, John Lovett who, who you know, you're, you're not, you know, running receiving patterns for in, in the spring, and then, and then Charlie Volker. So a lot of options, a lot of opportunities for people to come up and step up and, and make a name for yourself. How did that, that group fare? Yeah, and we, uh, you know, we've rolled guys in and out. So there's a number of guys who played or been in the rotation, uh, starting with Steven Carlson. I thought he emerged uh, and, and had a, a tremendous spring. He really got better practice to practice. His work rates and things we measure are off the charts. Um, he's coming up big on catches in the red zone where you have to compete for the ball. His body control, his route running uh, was really good. And then... Everybody after that has areas of their game that need to uh, need to improve the next four or five months as we head into training camp. But you know, Alex Parkinson has been a reliable guy for us. Uh, he was healthy all spring and uh, you know did did good things at times. There's things in his game he has to improve. Uh, Jordan Argue uh, is one of the better athletes we have on our team, and, and again, he would flash some really good things. Tiger Besh is in that category of you know, uh, big play thread at the slot. He and Ronaldo Maristani have both come off uh, injury play years, and, and both of them would at times really flash, but they've missed a lot of development time. So the more they can the next month or you know so until school ends and then uh, over the summer and through training camp, we, we could see some really exciting things from them. And, you know, there's a group of freshmen and some upperclassmen that also are pushing there. You know, the other spot in, in that passing game that, you know, is, is open now is, is the tight end position. And mm -hmm. we saw, you know, a couple flashes for, from Adam Midas last year. I mean, a touchdown against Columbia, two touchdowns on the season. And, you know, Carpenter gave you so much in terms of, of blocking. And then, you know, not as much last year, but, but the two years prior, you know, had an impact in the passing game. When you look at Adam Midas, does he project more as, as, as that blocking tight end, or, or do you see him maybe being more of a, a threat in the pass game than, than maybe Carpenter was? Yeah, we've had seven years and some version of the All-Ivy team, seven All-Ivy tight ends, and um, rendering this year, and you know, with Chris Carter, all he does is catch touchdowns. So uh, Graham really came on. Again, he's another guy. These young guys, those last three or four practices really tell a story. Um, he's had a terrific offseason. Uh, he started off doing well, and then those last three or four, four he, he is, he's so much more rangy than the tight ends we've had. Mm -hmm. We've had some taller guys, they weren't as fast as he is. He has the body frame and build and really honed in on those techniques and started to become the type of blocker we know he'll become. So he's got some strides to make, but we felt really good about him coming out of the, uh, out of the spring. And we moved, and Nick Peabody's played everywhere for us, mm -hmm. including quarterback. He was primarily a tight end or a move tight end during uh, uh, spring ball. And he was, the two, or two tight ends were consistently making big plays day in, day out. You don't lose a ton on the offensive line. And, and you have some really, I mean, you have some all IV <clears throat> guys returning. Uh, the spot that obviously is, is the central focus is that center position. I mean, you know, I thought that. Mason did a terrific job there stabilizing, you know, the line and, 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 you know, all the play calls. But, you know, you have Richard Bush who you played there. I know you saw a little bit of Ramirez there, you know, during the season. How did that position look? And then, you know, of the guys who were returning, did you see anybody take, wow, maybe a bigger leap than you thought? Yeah, well, you know, start, start with the center position. Mm -hmm. And um, Bush started a game last year. He played in every game. Uh, he really started to fulfill the potential we saw in him as a recruit, and uh, he's so intelligent. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever been around, and, and he's starting to play the game fast. And, and I thought he had a really good spring and really uh, looked to be one of our upper-level guys uh, as we finished spring. And um, he's a guy with a, a terrific offseason. I think we can count on uh, being a high-quality player for us. Um, uh, of the other guys... Uh, you know, we're, we're really starting to see, like Andre Guest um, and Brent Holder 
uh, or two freshmen that just have improved leaps and bounds from uh, last uh, training camp. Andre got some action last year, and uh, he is somebody who is really pushing to be, you know, in the rotation or as a starter right now. And um, Brent Holder is going to be a terrific tackle for us in the future. Project Riley Rodosevich. I mean, this is somebody who I think that, you know, because he's not a skill position guy, you know, the numbers don't flash like some other yeah. freshman in the league. But he was somebody that got a lot of playing time over yeah. the second half of the season. It was a big part of that championship push. Where's his next level, and, and, and what kind of lineman can he be here? Yeah, Riley is, he is not like the guy you walk into a room and say, this guy's a tackle. Like Mitch Swigert, that guy's a tackle. Zach Keem, he, you know, th those guys are tackle body types. Riley's in the Spencer Houston. He is mm -hmm. so athletic and so physical and so tough and so mentally tough that, you know, we, we started him out in the rotation, and then uh, both Stefan and Zach Keem got hurt, and we moved him to the other side, which isn't easy. You know, we had this big decision. Do we just move Mitch, who's played everywhere, secure left tackle? And Riley took to it and, you know, earned a significant role where he ended up making uh, honorable mention all Ivy as a freshman and certainly was a huge part of, uh, of our success. You know, I think for the most part, Princeton fans know what they're going to get from from a John Lovett, from a Chad Kanoff, from, you know, from a Charlie Volker. Two freshmen I wanted to touch on before we wrap up the offense. And guys who, in one case, I think probably will get some time. And in another case, you never know, are Ryan Quigley and, and Kevin Davidson. We saw some really impressive things out of Quigley, uh, you know, especially in that Cornell game. And then Davidson got a little bit of time, and, and that's another guy who is one, you know, one play away from having a vital role in this offense. So what did you see out of those two? Yeah, Quiggs is uh, somebody, he had so much energy, and we just kept, you know, every day of practice, he kept showing up, showing up, showing up and doing good things, and we put him on special teams. Then we start putting him in the role on offense, and every time he had an opportunity, he took advantage of it. Now he's bigger, stronger, faster, and he's pushing to be a significant contributor right now. He, he's a guy that I trust is gonna have a great off season, just because I've just seen how he works. He, he carries his lunch pail and goes to work every day, and he can do everything from catching the ball, his blocking isn't there yet, but it's getting better, and uh, his run skill is really good. In Kevin Davidson, uh, you see this in quarterbacks, the game slows down. And I, I just watched, it was a great documentary Sunday. I might have been the only person in Princeton that watched it, but it was Millville to the major leagues. My hometown, mm -hmm. Millville. I was so fired up, and it really highlighted that. But I heard one of the guys say about Mike Trout, every year, guys make a jump at one point, maybe one year, maybe mm -hmm. two. Every year, he's made a jump in something. And, and, and that was John Lovett. John Lovett, the game looked like it was slow motion. He's at practice and he's focused and tense, but there's this confidence, this quiet confidence he has. Um, and he completed 74% of his passes in spring, and we didn't catch it as well as I'd like. That, that's a significant thing. Kevin Davidson, the game's starting to slow down. Okay. You're starting to see that. He, he's not at the level of a, a senior like John Lovett um, or guys we've had in the past who've had all those reps but he's probably further ahead of them when they were freshmen. And his velocity on the ball, his accuracy, he probably has uh, the strongest arm of anybody we've had. Uh, you know, probably he's just bigger than Connor Michelson, you know, that way, but it's in that realm, but he's, you know, three, four inches taller and 30 pounds heavier. And his movement, like his ability to throw on the run improves significantly from practice one to practice 12. Some of the things we do with our quarterbacks athletically Man, he looked really good. Things that I thought he might struggle with when we recruited him, he's improving the weaknesses in his game. And it was really nice to see his development uh, show up in the spring.